Ah, that's some good whiskey. Oh, hi. Didn't see you there. Welcome to Houdini Hive Worldwide. My name is Simon Littlejohn, and I'm a senior effects artist over at Zoic Studios. It's a bummer we couldn't all be in person today, but we do everything digitally anyways, so it's kind of par for the course. So I have a nice presentation prepared for you guys. If you just want to come gather around, I'll show you magical effects. Before we get started, let's take a look at the render from my tutorial, Cauldron Magic. I'm going to be going over three methods I use to create effects in interesting ways to vary up the shape of the effect or make it more efficient to simulate. So this first thing I'm going to show you is how I made these particle trails. At first glance, they seem relatively simple, but there's a bit more to it than you think, and I'll show you why. So I've created a hip file here. That's just a breakdown of three different types of effects that I've made. They're all based off of the cauldron tutorial that should be available from side effects. So the first one's the trail example, so I'm going to dive into here. And so I've created a few things to kind of illustrate what's going on in there. So first, I'm going to bring in the points of the particle sim that I have. Nothing crazy, just some particles bouncing around. They are impacting the table. I don't have the geo in here just because I'm only going over the particle trails. So we don't have to worry about collision geo right now. But if we look at this, it's just points being simmed. Not very many, nothing too crazy about it. And so what we would want to do is emit from geo that's being stamped onto those points. So here I've just taken a sphere, it's got I'll make the frequency 10, and if I just play this, we can see now, here's those spheres. So to get what we have in that render, we need to start emitting particles from them. However, things can get a little weird, and I'll show you how. First of all, if I just go to the pop net and have sub-steps of one, if I dive in here, it's truly just, there's gravity, everything else is pretty much regular, default constant birth rate, scattering onto context geometry. So if I play this, and it's not working at all. <laughs> it looks terrible. The reason for this right now is because it's using inherited velocity. The points that I've simmed up here get copied on, the velocity gets copied onto this sphere. And therefore, when it inherits the velocity, it's shooting forward with the sphere. And not only is it doing that, but then we get this stepping, and that ain't cool. And so there's a few ways to combat this. You could increase the substeps. So I'm going to go over here. I'm gonna, this point wrangle right here is me just killing velocity. So now if I have substeps at 10, let's see what that looks like. Still looks pretty terrible. Let's see. I wonder how many substeps it would take for this to actually look good. Let me just do like 15. And so any, anytime you increase substeps, you're going to be increasing the sim time, and that still does not look good. So there's a thing in a pop net that allows for a little bit better subframe interpolation. So what I did here is in the birth tab, you have jitter birth times positive and then interpolate source. You can have forward or back. I chose back and then interpolation method match topology. And with this, it should help to get rid of that stepping for things that are moving quickly. But if we play this, you can see that as particles die, that geo that's on the particle dies. And so this thing is constantly changing point, point counts, and you can't really use match tap topology unless the topology stays consistent the entire time. But since all these points are going in and out of existence, it jumps between each of them. You can see these strange trails going in between, and we don't want that to happen. So I even isolated it so that we just had one. So there's a quick little animation here where this is just the same geo, so you could technically use match topology with this sim. However, if I have subsets at two, we go in here, just make sure we got match topology, interpolate source back. Let's see what happens. We'll view this here. It looks better, but it doesn't look great. I'm still getting weird stuff here. You can see circular bits intermixed with longer bits it's just not it's not what i want it looks bad and so what i like to do is i like to create the geometry within the subframes so if we go to time blend here well first let's just look at what i'm getting from the particle sims if i turn this to being able to see the points if i go over to the settings 
and then check off integer frames, we can now see what's happening in the subframes. And so as I slowly drag this, you can see that it jumps because they have whole frame movement and it doesn't know anything in the subframe. However, once I go to the time blend, time blend uses the point ID attribute, which is each of these particles have an ID attribute. So now if I do this, as I slowly scrub through the subframes, you can see that there is a linear interpolation between each subframe. And that's exactly what we need. So I'm going to turn integer frames back on. And then I'm going to create a trail. And so what you're seeing here is I have a trail length of eight. But then what I'm doing is I want to create points within each subframe. So here's like frame 1062. Or I guess this would be 1061. And this point up here represents 1062. And then here's all the points in between that subframe. And so if I take the trail length, and then go to trail increment. Usually it's on whole frames, but what I'm doing is saying one divided by trail length. And so when I do that, it gives me an increment of subframes. So now it's 0 0.125. So it does the math for me. And now this is creating a line. And so if I go now to add, what I can do is I can create polygons by group and make the attribute name ID. Since each of these points don't have individual IDs, these are all copies of one point. They all share the same ID, and therefore this will create a line in between all of these guys. If I didn't have this, so let's say I did all points, it's going to just create points between all of these, and I definitely don't want that. So let's go back to buy attribute. So then what I do is I create a polywire, subdivide it. This gives me geo. There's a few ways to go about this. For this purpose, I don't really need to fill this in with points, but you could just do points from volume. I'm just using this to scatter onto the surface, and it works out fine. And then here's me just killing the velocity on this because, again, I don't want this to have velocity. I just want it to trail behind. So it should be birthed with no velocity, and that's fine. So if I go into this pop net, what I've done is I've given it a life attribute. I gave it some force, and I'm giving it some drag dependent on ID and a random min and max value. Gave it some gravity. And so let's see what this looks like now. I do have sub steps here. However, it's a relatively low value compared to when we had it up to 15 and it still wasn't doing anything. So let's just see what this looks like. So that looks a lot more like what I want. Again, this is a lot less points, but that's fine. It's just for a tutorial. So we aren't going crazy here, but yeah, so this will give you good trails. You don't have to worry about subframes and having a billion sub steps to get your sim. So now that we've done this, let's take a look at the next section. If we go back to the render, I'll show you. We are now going to work on how to make a shape like this that's not just perfectly spherical. Still has an orb-like quality to it, but just has a more unique, interesting shape in general. So let's go. I'm going to get out of this thing. So. In the orb example, first I'll show you how I originally did it. And I'm just importing the shape that I created for the tutorial. And we'll be getting to this, but before I play around with that, I'm just going to extract the centroid from that, which has the animation that we need. And so this just kind of starts around frame 1100. It goes up and it stops. Simple as that. So I'm going to put a sphere, copy the points onto that. And then what I did here is I just created a billowy smoke pyro configure. I think it's the easiest way to drop a pyro or a sparse pyro dop, but there's other ways to do it. This is just how I do it just because it's so simple. And then I modify it accordingly. Right now I'm just taking a uh, volume scatter with this pyro source. A lot of times I'll do keep input and create my own points, but for this purpose, we're going to do volume scatter. Give it some noise, rasterize it. And then I just cast this out just as an example of how I originally went about it. So if I go here. So if you just take a sphere and here in the solve, in the simulation, I made buoyancy scale negative two and a time scale of two. It looks okay, I guess. For some reason this is cooking, I don't know why. Okay, I am loading.
going for disk, so I don't know what happened there, but okay. So if I just kind of play 50, I have about 70 frames here. So this looks okay, but if I were to render this, this just doesn't look that interesting up here. It's just stuff coming out of a sphere. I'm not too excited about it. So I thought, well, there's got to be a way to maintain sort of a spherical look, but give it a more unique shape. And so I kind of came up with this here where what I'm doing is I'm creating a sphere working on or at origin. And so what I'm doing is I'm doing a points from volume. I'm giving it some noise and some color just because if I want to emit from this, then it's good to have a color gradient that I can then turn into any other color that I want after the fact. Then what I'm doing here is there's a lot of things going on, but the overall gist is that I'm creating normals like I was doing before with the trails and then directing them slightly. What I'm doing is this, this code up here is just giving me an outward normal because I can't use any, I can't use a facet because there's no polygons here. So I'm just taking the centroid and subtracting that from each point's position, which gives me an outward normal. Then here I'm just normalizing it and lerping between the outward normal and an up vector. And I'll show you what that looks like here. If I turn this on, what I'm doing is I can change this bias so that I can make things go directly up or go as far outward as I want. And for the purpose of this sim, I wanted things that were going not perfectly straight down. I wanted it to fan out a bit so that it would hit the sides of a collision object. So after I do all that, I give it a random length. And you can look at all this in the tutorial. But this is just sort of a brief look at the code that I'm using here. So for the collision geo, I'm just making something that's larger than this sphere. So here's the sphere, and then I want something that's a bit larger that it can collide against. Then I'm cutting a hole in the bottom. So there's that hole. And then I'm noising it up. And then I'm doing a poly extrude. And so then now this is giving me a volume to work with. It's watertight. Also, I'm creating a primitive group for this collision object so that I can do stuff to both of these things at the same time and then after the fact, split them out. So if I merge these and then I do copy to points, now this point over here that has the animation, you can look here, I can now stick this onto that, which is perfect. And then here I'm just splitting these out into two separate sections using this group, my primitive group collider. So on one side, it gives me my emitter. And then on the other side, it's giving me my, my collider, which I'm turning into a VDB. And the VDB fits perfectly into this pyrosolver. If you look at the simulation or the setup, collisions, you just pipe this SDF plus volume velocity into this second input. So what I'm doing here is now that I have these points, I'm gonna get out of manual. I'm using keep source or keep input, which all of these now still have my normal, which again also has velocity, just looks way different. Don't like using it rasterizing it. I'm not using any noise for this. And so then this is bringing in V. So if you look here, you need to make sure that you're bringing in the attribute velocity and your rasterize, you're creating V. And then in your pyro solver, you go into manual mode, just have to make sure that in your sourcing, there's also the source volume V, target field VEL, since DOPS look for VEL instead of V, make sure the field rank is a vector. And so what this is gonna do is things are gonna emit from this out from the center and then collide with this collision object. And then as it moves up, it's gonna be shooting outward. I didn't want things to go perfectly down because then it's gonna give a sort of a weird tail shape. I want some, of a, some bit of a tail, but I do want a lot of the stuff to just be hitting the side of this thing. And so I wrote this out, I have 70 frames of it. And you can see here, it's not going to look exactly like how I have it in the tutorial, but it's the overall gist. There's a few other things that I do to this to give it sort of a spiral motion. But for the limited time I have, this is just sort of a quick overview. So you can see here that it's not a perfect sphere, but it is giving an orb-like shape and it's colliding with the sides of this collision object. And then of course you can shade it. And another thing that I'm doing in the tutorial is using this to also emit particles and be infected by. But 
to get the main shape, this is what you need to do first, is get a nice volume for advection. And so that's just a pretty quick overview on how to get that set up. Now I'm going to go over to the third and final thing of this presentation. So let's go back to the render and take a look at what we're going to be doing here. So after this orb goes up into the air, it sort of fizzles out and then boosh. Gives you a nice mighty little boosh there. There we go. So we're, I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to create something like this without any stepping. It takes a while to render, but in the end it looks pretty cool. So let's jump over to the example. All right, so blast example. So I've just extracted out the initial geo that I'm using to create the blast. It's towards the end of the frame range, so it doesn't really start until around 1200. But from a top view, you can see that there's just a circle. It's copied to the point where the orb was, and then it just has an animation of it expanding outward. Pretty simple stuff. It's got a lot of points on it. I believe it's around 500, if you middle click, 501. So it's got five, around 500 points, and we can work with this. So first thing that I want is I do want velocity for this one. So we can just do a trail. I want to compute velocity. Cool, that's that. Then we want subframe data like we were doing with the trails before. So we need to do a time blend. I'm just going to stick this over to the side. You'll see why. And so if I go into subframe data just to make sure, let's just look, make sure that this isn't stepping. Slowly go through the frames and yep, it does not look like it's stepping. That's good. So now I'm going to go back to integer frames and we're going to do what I did before with the trail. So I think I want a trail length of eight again. So we'll do eight. But again, this is whole frames right now and that's not what I want. So I can do Copy parameter, do trail increment, one divided by eight. So paste relative res reference. And now I see what's going on in the subframes. Let's go to here. Cool. So we can't do a whole lot with this right now. We could do some stuff, but I don't think any of it would all look all that good. But now comes the magic of poly patch, which is super helpful for this particular effect. This just takes all those rings and patches polygon. So it gives me an exact representation of the geometry that I need for this blast. We don't necessarily need the output divisions. We could just keep it at one. Eh, you might as well do two, Wh whatever. That looks good. Cool. Now that we have the exact shape that we want, it's getting a little heavy. It's because there's a lot of points for it to think about, I guess. But what we're gonna do is Instead of scattering points onto this, I think I want an actual volume of points. So I'm going to do a poly extrude. Give it a decent amount of distance. One thing that's getting a little funky here, you can see this. You can get rid of that if you just do a fuse. Uh, maybe not. Uh, you know. Not gonna mess with it right now. That's fixed it before. I'm not sure why it's doing it now, but it's fine because we're gonna be filling this with points anyways. So we're gonna output it back. And now we have ourselves a watertight shape that we can then do points from volume with. And as I've said in my tutorial and other places, I really wanna checkbox so that I can get rid of this stupid blue shape because now I have to zoom in and try to figure out or I can click away. There, there's certain ways that I can get rid of it. It's kind of a crapshoot. So I'm changing the jitter scale there. Now I'm gonna have to put a null just so I can see what I'm doing here. Can't get rid of, the, of that blue shape for some reason. I don't have enough points, so I'm gonna make it 0.05. You really gotta do this in increments. You can easily bomb your box with points from volumes just from accidentally going too low. If you hit zero, it's game over. 
Let's see how many points that is. Five million. I don't think I need five million. Eh, two million. Meh. Still don't need that much. That should be fine. So this is going to be shooting out radially, and that's cool. Another thing that I think I want right now, I'm just going to build some real simple noise. I'm going to go into manual. Because we do want to vary up the shape a little bit here. Real quick, just to add to the point position. We don't need a rest position for this. Turbulent noise for quick and easy noise. Make sure that it's 3D. I'm going to go to simplex, add to this, promote these parameters. Go to here, let's see what it looks like now. Yeah, I think that's fine for what we need. But one other thing that we need to do to vary up the shape is this is way too spherical. And instead of keeping it that spherical, we need to change the look of the initial curve that we have. So to do that, we're just going to copy what we did here. The only thing is I don't really want this to change shape from top to bottom. I only want it to be changing shape from the X and Z axis. So I can easily just do vector to float, float to vector. Might be a quicker way to do this, but I feel like this is pretty quick. So this is how I do it a lot of the times. And then now if we look from top to bottom, we're good to go. Now I wanna lower the frequency significantly and then increase the amplitude. I want to go even farther here. We want a pretty broad shape. Something like that, maybe up the frequency just a little bit more, something like that. So now when this shoots out, it is a way irregular shape. I, we can decrease the amplitude a bit to be a little bit more spherical. Okay, I think that works. Then all you got to do is do an attrib transfer because you want that velocity on your points. So you would just do this. Make sure that you're just bringing in V. Now, if we look here, we've got V, so all this stuff is shooting out. Looks good. Though, one thing I noticed is that since this is transferring just from these single points, the velocity gets a little bit too uniform, so you can do an attribute blur. And make sure that here, if you do V, you can do influence type proximity. Just increase the max neighbors, increase the proximity radius, radius, increase the step size. So that's gonna smooth your velocity out so that you don't get uh, perfect lines in there due to it only pulling from single points instead of a lot of points. And so then from there, you would just do, we can kind of, we're gonna steal. I'm gonna go over to our orb example and we're gonna steal these things. didn't work. Cool. Let's just see what happens. We're going to start this at 1200. Also, in the setup, I'm going to make this something pretty high just so that we don't wait forever for it. So here's our shape. Now if we go to see what's happening, we also don't need this to have a negative buoyancy scale. We just want this to float in midair. Advanced should be mid and max sub steps of two. This all looks good. Just gonna hit go on it and see what happens. So 
So this is gonna take too long to completely cash out, but now you can see, just from this quick example, that this is doing pretty much exactly what's going on in the render. And there you go, now you have your sort of radial blast. I think it looks pretty neat. Well, cheers, guys. Uh, thanks for joining me in Cauldron Magic. Hope no matter what your Houdini skill level is, that you learn something new. Thanks again to Rob and Chris for including me. And hope you guys have a good rest of the day. I'm going to go get out of these pants. Cheers.